What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here. Welcome to Final Thoughts, the video series where I point out the pros and cons of a brand new video game title so that you can decide for yourself if it's right for you. In this episode, I am four hours into an RPG game called Drift Moon. This is a game that actually came out back in February 2013 for the PC, but only now, at the start of the new year, has it landed on Steam. In this series, you never have to wait for my opinion. In this case, I would consider Drift Moon to be an excellent game that combines some really funny humor with old-school top-down RPG mechanics. But is it right for you? Well, let's find out. To begin, Drift Moon is a role-playing game where you play the role of, insert name here, a wayward village son who returns home in response to an urgent message from his father only to find the entire citizenry of his village petrified by mysterious magic. You must then search the village and strike out on quests, piecing together the clues while defending yourself from enemies like spiders, skeletons, and a passive-aggressive clown. Along the way, you'll pick up multiple companions, each of whom has a backstory, and should you return to places you've already been before, you'll occasionally find extra content and new jokes that reward you for your thoroughness. This game is the first developed by the husband and wife team behind Instant Kingdom, a brand new video game developer based out of Yuvaskula, Finland. So let's talk about pros and cons. First up, the pros. Without question, my favorite part of the game is the humor. The storyline is great, the conversations between NPCs are entertaining, there are several references to movies and other video games, and I always found myself wanting to know more about the characters and the events in the story. And in a lot of games, you'll find all the heroes and NPCs very one-note, as they're usually written by one person. In this case, Clearly, someone spent a lot of time giving each character their own take on the world, and that's worth applauding. While exploring, if you can see it, you can take it. If there's a pearl on the other side of a river, you simply click on it and you get it. The game does not force you to walk three minutes out of your way to a bridge just to pick up a pearl. The game has rekey binding. I always point that out whenever I see it, and it's always a plus. I enjoyed the music in this game. It reminds me of the music from Fable 2. Uh, it has a very Scottish slash adventurer streak to it. I know musical taste is very subjective, so not everyone will agree with me. But regardless, it was well performed and, you know, it's nice. It's nice to have in the background. There is tons, let me say that again, tons of lore in this game. If you enjoy reading all about every human being and their lives and their diaries and their important political papers, then you should seriously consider this game. Once you've been to a region, you can quick travel there in seconds using your world map, even if you're just crossing from one side of the town that you are in to the other. This cuts the amount of time you would normally have to play this game in half. I love secret passageways in video games and there are many places in driftwood where you can tap on a wall or pull on a torch to get to new places sometimes they are quite noticeable and not so secret but other times they are hidden in dark little corners and you are only rewarded with their secrets if you really search the room thoroughly there are missions that can be won either by attacking the npc directly or through dialogue depending upon how you want to play them. In fact, at the start of the game, you can choose your difficulty settings to alter whether you want the game as a whole to be more action-oriented or, conversely, more cerebral. Also, the higher you jack your intelligence rating, the more astute you will become at winning through words. I have played many RPGs, in fact it's my favorite genre. Without spoiling it for you, there are several truly creative loot items that you will find along the way, and how you use them can really make your game unique. When visiting the shopkeeper, he or she only has so much gold. Once the shopkeeper is poor, they can't buy anything else off you. Little things like that make the story more real. Of course the shopkeeper doesn't have endless gold. If he did, he wouldn't be living in the dungeon, now would he? Finally, I love the companions. They're funny, and the AI performs pretty good in fights. Uh, you can talk to them and get their backstory, and they have emotions and mood swings. Um, unlike in other RPGs I've played, when my companions take a hit in combat, I find myself apologizing to them. 
Now, let's talk about the cons. Um, I've yet to find the perfect game, and in this case, I did find a few flaws, as you might expect from a first-time indie developer. Uh, if story is my favorite part of the game, then one of the things that bothers me the most is that at times, there is a ton of text to read, and some of it is useless adjectives that really don't need to be there. Hit me with the highlights, and let me build the rest in my imagination. Okay? Also, they tend to bury important plot points in the middle of paragraphs. All right? So it makes it very difficult to pick out the important things that you really need to say. Uh, one of the primary mechanics is that you have to move things in order to look under them to see if they are covering any cool loot, which is a great mechanic. Some things, like petrified humans, all right, are heavy, and they take a while to move, and appropriately so. Some things are light and can be hurled without a second thought. But there are a few things that take forever to move, though they are clearly lightweight. Specifically, chairs, okay? The developers need to find a chair and move it to the other side of the room, time themselves, and then incorporate that, that same speed into their game. If you click on something that makes a sound effect, uh, and just as a for instance, like let's say you're dragging a chair, and then immediately launch a dialogue screen, the whole time you're reading the text, the sound effect of the in this case the dragging chair that you just heard continues to play in the background over and over again depending upon the sound effect that can be incredibly annoying um, the game never crashed and I never got stuck but that's not to say that this game is perfectly polished there are times where lights will pass through walls if you're standing in just the right way and will send you into darkness while illuminating whatever's on the other side of the wall also, the animations in this game are very stiff, uh, which is not something you notice when the camera is far away, but when you zoom in, it's plainly obvious. Uh, these are minor cosmetic issues, and you should expect such things uh, from a game that was made by, frankly, less than five people. Uh, finally, when two people are talking, sometimes the dialogue boxes, which float above their heads, will overlap, making neither readable. Uh, so far, that's only prevented me from reading jokes, but I'm worried that I might miss a plot point or side quest clue in the future uh, because my companion and I are talking at the same time. So, a final thought. A lot of disappointing video games were launched in 2013, and even those that were cream of the crop oftentimes sacrificed a quality storyline in exchange for experiments in game mechanics. This game went the opposite direction, offering a simple and straightforward traditional RPG game with an engaging story and a sprinkling of quirky irreverence that makes this title a treat. This one has me hooked, and if you are the kind of person who loves to read lore in video games and fall in love with your characters, this title will not disappoint. Is it right for you? Well, only you can decide that, and hopefully this video has helped. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I'll see you next time.